Hello, I'm Jonathan William O'Toole, and I'm sitting here today on the banks of the Little M Muddy River, not too far from the Missouri River, the biggest river, the longest river in the continent of North America. To my African friends, it's our version of the Nile, although nowhere near as long as the Nile, but the Missouri River, which begins in Montana and passes through uh, North Dakota, where I am now, is the longest river on the continent of North America. So I'm sitting by the banks of one of its um, small tributaries, the Little Muddy River, and I want to talk with you today. By the way, I'm, I'm chewing oregano. You might think I'm chewing tobacco. I do have some an herb stuffed up in my lip, but I'm not chewing tobacco today. I'm chewing oregano, which has antiviral and antibacterial properties. Um, in case anyone wanted to know, that's a tidbit of um, herbal wisdom. But I want to talk with you today about vampirism. You heard me right, vampirism. The study of vampires. And I know many of you will be laughing at me at this point and saying, what is this guy talking about? Why should I give him time? Vampires are mythical creatures. They don't exist. Well, there are people and there are serious priests, one Anglican priest in particular out there, who would um, argue that point. I'm not one of them. I have no experience with the mythical creature known as a vampire. But the concept of vampirism, coming from the uh, legends, as I best understand it, of uh, Eastern Europe, and Vlad the Impaler, who impaled, who was a real historical figure who impaled people upon stakes. Uh, I'd like to lay all those aside um, and just take the position that parasitism of one human upon another at the behest specifically of evil spirits or demonic spirits or spirits that fall under the kingdom of rebellion of Satan is what I'm referring to, generally speaking, when I talk about vampirism. And I think that the mythos, the story of the vampire, illustrates this, um, this demonic, this satanic reality very clearly. And I want to sort of skip the entire, I don't have time to go through the, the legendary history of the vampire or the mythological history, but I want to focus in on a particular movie by Carl Theodore Dreyer, arguably one of the greatest uh, filmmakers in history. And Carl Dreyer uh, lived during uh, the Weimar Republic and afterwards, but he made a movie called Vampire, V A. M-P-Y-R, during the latter years of the Weimar Republic. He was Danish, but the movie was released in Germany in 1932, during the Weimar Republic. And the movie, very horrifically, it's a silent film, but very much worth watching. It horrifically depicts a young man who uh, finds himself in a town wherein the vampire which is personified ultimately but in the spirit of a, a wicked Jezebel, demonic, demon-possessed um, sp spirit of, an, of a dead woman, uh, is using the medical establishment, which is the local town doctor, as her uh, means and her cover for preying on the bodies, minds, and souls of the innocent people in this town. And... I do recommend the film, very worth watching, but Vampire, V-A-M-P-Y-R, by Carl Theodore Dreyer of 1932, illustrates the situation that was occurring in the Weimar Republic in 1932, when the state itself had become a mechanism for effectively feeding on the people that the state, the Weimar Republic, was designed to ostensibly, supposedly, to protect, especially through the medical establishment. The Weimar Republic was allowing 
uh, Berlin in the name of science and medicine to become the sodomite, the sodomy uh, capital of the world after they were defeated uh, in World War I and uh, Germany's currency was utterly debased. Uh, well, Germany was also morally debased and turned into the capital of so-called homosexuality, gayism, sodomy in the world. And the universities system was used as an excuse to promote um, the university system was was turned into what amounted to little more than a sodomite brothel where in the name of studies and science you know young men and men were raped sodomized and um, this was the spirit that had uh, infiltrated in the name of medicine and science outside of the Hippocratic tradition, the tradition of the Hippocratic Oath, Weimar Republic, Germany. Now, I'm bringing this up. I don't have time to go into this in depth, but I'm bringing this up to illustrate what is happening right now. Today is May 6th, the 6th of May, 2020, and the whole world is facing a similar situation, I would argue, a situation in which the medical establishment of the world has been hijacked by the forces of vampirism. Again, by vampirism, I mean satanic forces which desire not to fulfill the Hippocratic Oath. And many doctors don't actually take. People assume they still take it, but many doctors, especially in the Western world, do not, in fact, take the Hippocratic Oath. And uh, the original Hippocratic Oath of Hippocrates said, I will not do abortions. So many doctors don't take even a modified form of it. And it's a big um, popular legend and urban legend and myth that um, most people think that, that all their doctors that they see have actually taken a Hippocratic Oath. But I digress. The spirit of vampirism manifested through Bill Gates, manifested through the effort to put something pointy, think about this, into the bodies in terms of the vaccine they'd all like to inoculate us with, you know what I'm talking about, of every human being on earth, I submit to you, go watch Carl Theodore Dreyer's Vampire, V-A-M-P-Y-R. Um, years ago, when I was much younger, um, I was watching this silent film, black and white film, in my father and mother's house, and my mother said, turn that off, because the, the, the woman who portrays the woman who's oppressed, who's been bitten and oppressed by the spirit of the vampire, is so chilling and horrific that my mother couldn't handle it. She said, I don't want that in my house. So Carl Dreyer really portrayed the horrific evil of the vampire. I'm telling you, at a certain point, men and women of goodwill, I'm talking not only to Christians, I'm a Christian, and I know that ultimately, let me just say, ultimately, the only power that has the power to defeat the spirit of Satan and of the vampire is the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the cross. Because God gives us his flesh and blood through baptism and through the Holy Eucharist and through his death, burial, and resurrection. As he said, as Jesus said, my flesh is food indeed, my blood is drink indeed. So God gives his people the ability to feed off of him to deliver us from the conundrum, the satanic conundrum of the vampire, which is that the vampire wants eternal life. Bill Gates also wants eternal life. The people behind him and the people collaborating with him want eternal life. And they want it through feeding off of you, your soul, and your children. They'll never get it. The Lord won't let them have it. In fact, if they don't repent, he'll give them eternal death. The only question is, how many people will they infect? And how many people will they kill? And how many people's souls will they destroy in the meantime? Only the power of God and of his word, I have the Holy Bible here, can deliver us from the power of the vampire who wants to put something pointy into your body 
and give you his spirit and his biology so that he can harvest your soul. Now, there are many people out there who have written on this subject and are speaking on this subject, such as Dr. E. Michael Jones. I owe a lot to him from uh, the book of Libido uh, Dominandi. Very good book, more than 800 pages long. I'm afraid that Dr. Jones and others are leading people to enslavement, ultimately to a magisterium, which is a, a version, a Christian version of a Talmud, something that would ultimately overrule the Word of God and the Bible. So I'm wary of that, but I'm thankful to the debt that I owe and to Dr. E. Michael Jones himself for teaching me over the years through his books about the seductive nature. And that's another aspect of the vampire. He's a seducer. He's charming. But in the end, it's all lies and it's all death. People of goodwill, even non-Christians, even my Muslim friends, I'm making this video to tell you, don't be seduced by the spirit of the vampire. Resist the devil, the Bible says, and he will flee. Now, the devil has been, through the permission of Christians who have failed to resist him, feasting on the bodies of innocent children in the Western world where we have legalized abortion and in other parts of the world like South Africa where they have legalized abortion and advertise it on every utility pole in the city of Johannesburg. I can bear witness to that. We have failed to defend God's children, and that's why the Lord has allowed, make no mistake, the Lord has allowed these vampires like Bill Gates to get so much leverage over us. We need to repent. We need to trust in the power of the cross. Christ and him crucified only can deliver us from the power of the vampire. The preborn deserve the same defense as the born. They're being slaughtered every day. That's specifically what we need to repent of, is not physically defending them. That's right, I said physically. If you were being killed, you wouldn't want people just to pray. Of course, prayer is our weapon as a Christian. But when someone is hungry, you don't just pray, you give them food. When someone's thirsty, you don't just pray for them, you give them drink. Sindio, isn't it? That's what you do. And when someone needs to be defended against a wild dog or even a human aggressor, you use the least amount of necessary force to defend that person. And we failed to defend the preborn. And on top of that, we condemned the people who did defend them, like Paul Jennings Hill. So let, let us repent, let us resist the vampire, and Christ himself, by his blood, will deliver us from this enslavement. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.